Hey guys, Ironfire here, and welcome to a new Minecraft Redstone tutorial. Today we are starting our first day in the brand new laboratory. Um, if you haven't been keeping up, um, all my world files got deleted, so I had to start over. Honestly, this did not take long to rebuild. Um, as much as it looks like I did a bunch of fancy stuff over here and you know, made this reactor thing, it really wasn't that hard to rebuild, and I decided to create a much more pleasing and efficient design this time. Um, ignore that, I was messing around with redstone lighting and sort of broke the circuit, so there's just this set over there. So, fancy door. Um, it actually, the pressure plates, you don't have to hold them down, they're just a toggle, which really proud of that. That's why I'm showing them off. Um, I may have gone a bit overboard with the lighting, so that's probably why we're having glitches with it. But today's episode has nothing to do with the new laboratory. It's five simple redstone contraptions that will blow your mind. Well, some of them. So first up, we have this really old-fashioned, you know, but never been beat um, Minecraft sorting system. Or, I guess, according to what I've seen, it hasn't been beat. I couldn't see uh, any contraption doing much better than this. The neat thing about it is I actually put two of them together to show the example of this. It is actually only one block thick, and you can put them directly next to each other and they will still work perfectly fine. So here, um, basically, you're going to want to make sure that the hopper is facing uh, towards some block that can't take any items. Um, the easiest one to do is just the comparator sticking out here. And then you're going to want to do two blocks and then one drop down into this and then a repeater going off of it into a block with a redstone torch hanging from it. That will power this block, which will turn off this hopper. It's a really compact design. So if you look inside here, we have 41 of the item we're sorting, and then four items titled X. I will warn you, this does not work with tools like a sword um, if you want to try and do that you know you may be thinking oh well nothing will stack on top of it but according to how the hopper is coded a sword will count as actually 64 items so much more than the 45 that are within our hopper in here so it will always swallow the item uh, swallow the tool once put in there so you're just going to want to keep your eye out for that. Um, here we have the same setup, redstone and then four X's. Um, you can title an item by putting it in anvil, so let's just take this arrow. If you grab yourself an anvil, and maybe sometime in the future I'll do a video dedicated to craft to more complex crafting recipes, you just name it X and call it a day. Um, I'd actually suggest doing it with an item that you're never going to use anywhere else, like Rotten Flesh, if you're planning on making this in survival. So, this third layer up here, any one of these hoppers is the input, so long as it's before where the item actually needs to go. So we could actually start in this hopper. So I'm going to go right here and grab myself some redstone and some iron blocks. We're gonna start by throwing in the iron blocks. And you'll see there's nothing happening here. They're just crossing right over this hopper, not ending up in this chest, and they're ending up down here, which is magical, to be honest. And now let's throw in some redstone, get it eating that up. You'll notice uh, that this torch is turning off, which means something's going through into that chest. Now, the reason why when I open it, um, it's not changing items is because this is actually a trapped chest. 
so it um, when I open it it's actually acting as the power source for this hopper because trap chests give off power I could put a dispenser down here to create a better example but whatever and now it's stopped sorting the uh, redstone and it sorted the rest of the iron that I had in that chest so this is a great way for if you're getting tired of organizing all your items as soon as you get back from a mining trip, you just set it up to or automatically organize your ores. You could even uh, set this up to where instead of this chest, it's just a furnace um, that has some coal preloaded inside, and then it has a hopper out the bottom that takes um, the iron ingots and puts that into a separate chest. It's all up to you. Next, we have, I think, what's my new favorite clock, because it is literally as simple as it looks. It's two observer blocks looking at opposite directions with redstone, and I'm going to put a warning here. I have made an alarm system out of it, um, so if you are, in fact, a headphone user and you like wearing those, uh, you might want to turn your volume down now because it's going to get a little bit loud and for anybody using any volume it's going to get a little bit annoying. I just think that's magnificent. So I'm going to cut that off here so you aren't annoyed to death. Um, also in the new snapshot for those of you who are not aware gold blocks underneath note blocks make a bell sound and clay makes a flute sound and I don't remember all of them so you're probably gonna have to look at them from another source maybe I'll do an update overview when the full update comes out um, talking about all the new stuff they added in uh, this update which would be awesome definitely uh, a fun video to make so of course you can't have a, a set of redstone contraptions that'll blow your mind without one that literally blows up your mind. Yep, a TNT cannon that uses slime blocks instead of TNT to launch it. So this is much more resource efficient because you're not using five to ten blocks of TNT just to launch your one bullet. So this is literally exactly what it looks like. You could pause the video right here. Here, I'll do it from the other side so you have a blank background. You could pause the video right here and build this. This repeater is one tick back, this repeater is none, and this repeater is three. And everything else is, is exactly what it looks like. You just fill this dispenser with TNT and call it a day. Um, and that's some of my favorite things about these contraptions. Most of them you could just build straight from what it looks like. So I'll explain how it works because this series isn't, you know, build this contraption. It's learn something. So basically, if you didn't know, slime blocks actually push um, players, mobs, and other entities. Uh, whenever pushed by a piston. So it uses two sticky pistons and slime blocks and a dispenser summoning a TNT to push it out and then it just a half a second later shoving it up into the air. And then with my amazing perfect timing, totally did not blow this up eight times getting this right, um, launching the TNT that way. So we use the famous torch tower. I could have easily done the glowstone thing, and in fact, I did that over there. Um, but I thought that the torch tower just made it a lot more compact and fun. So, yeah, I think that w is a gr good enough explanation. So the next one is. I'm not taking credit for building this because I didn't. I saw it in a mumbo jumbo video, but I did in fact fix it because there have been a few changes to observer blocks that have happened since that video happened. 
So first off, this one isn't as simple. Um, you have actually two observer blocks, so um, it's not as simple as it as it you know first looks. But basically, you're gonna have to sneak in here and place an observer block. So the face is the face. I forget which way to place it, but you're going to want to set it up so that way the face is going towards a dispenser. No. Dropper is probably better because it uses less resources. Ta-da! And I'm going to reset this block. And then you're going to want to set an observer block so it's facing... Nope. That wasn't it. Actually, no, that was correct. Awesome. So, and then you're going to want to set another observer block so it's facing... You want it to be facing towards the power source. So, the neat thing about this uh, setup, and I'm going to have to reset this, is this is a way to cross two redstone signals independently, which was something that was very hard to do previously, and this is a much more compact way to do it. When this lever is on, that sticky piston with a redstone, which I covered earlier in an earlier episode, will extend and push the piston. Now, because the piston is turning on and off so quickly, it'll just leave its block out there. So, when this lever is on, that redstone block is extended and if you had the start of some redstone contraption right here then as you can see it's powered but if I turn this off it's not powered anymore which it just allows for two redstone signals to occur in the same space and not have to intersect I've been wanting this for a long time. Honestly, they should add um, a crossroad block that just allows it to where you can either have signals curving a corner, so like this signal goes to here and this signal goes to here, or have it to where it crosses over in a straight line. I've been wanting them to add that and have a third item right about here for quite a while. Um, but this is a way to appease that wish until they actually do make something like that. And it's, I personally think it's inevitable for them to make an actual block that does this. So I hope to see this in a lot of redstone designs because I hear a lot of people complaining about their redstone being destroyed because they can't get it to cross in a small enough space. And now the final redstone contraption, an elevator. Now, I have actually personally built faster elevators than this, but I have never built an elevator this reliable. I keep getting stuck in the middle of the mechanism on all my fast elevators because my computer can't exactly run quickly. In fact, you saw it down over there with uh, the redstone lamps. My computer just wasn't running it correctly and those redstone lights just got stuck. Well, this this is perfectly designed to not create intense amounts of lag, and it uses slime blocks to create an elevator. Now, I had it disabled to show off the slime blocks launching players, but if I do this, it perfectly catches you, and it gives you plenty of time to get out of the way. So you won't have to worry about any slow computers here, which is usually the problem with elevators. So this is a pretty simple design, um, but I'm going to have to go through it bit by bit because you guys didn't build it, so you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing. So right here is where the button is. You're going to want to wire that down to any of these uh, blocks right here. These sh uh, these blocks right here should be either air or obsidian, um, or just one of them should be a sticky piston. 
Um, if you have multiple as sticky pistons, I'm afraid to tell you this, but your contraption is going to catastrophically fail. Basically, one piston will go off before the others and pull the other pistons with it. And as soon as they get up there, then this, these blocks will push those pistons up more, and then this will push th that piston up more, and everything will explode. So I highly suggest being very careful and making sure that there's only one piston. That will, using slime blocks, push these four blocks. And any block that these slime blocks will ever touch should be either air or obsidian just to make sure that they don't push anything because pistons completely ignore air and obsidian when pushing blocks. Next is the more complicated part, catching the player. This is never fun, but it turns out it's actually not that hard. So first you're going to want to take your glowstone or slab elevator for redstone. I learned today that in the recent snapshots, this actually only works going up. If you want to go down, you're going to have to do a regular old-fashioned staircase, which is annoying. So, now that we're up here, I have this button here to allow me to test it from the top. It staircases up into this repeater, and then we have a pulse extender, which I covered in my in a previous episode if you want to watch those and find it this basically just makes the redstone signal last much longer and it goes into two repeaters that loop around to another set of repeaters and technically I probably could set this up so that way it was a block like this and then this repeater was ticked back all the way and this would have the exact same delay as this but I much prefer to have um, repeaters here because it takes up less blocks and it makes things all nice and smooth so that uh, you want four ticks on your repeaters to get the exact perfect timing plus the repeater that goes into your pulse extender so when I hit this you'll see that both of them will extend after a short period of time and you see that the right ones a little bit delayed you do in fact get caught just barely by this right one it took a little bit of uh, finagling to get it to where guaranteed you will be caught by one or the other but I def I do think I did a good job so if you like this video and you want more please leave a like, uh, like below it really uh, it shows that you guys appreciate these videos and sort of encourages me to make more so I've already got a plan for the next episode so it might not take as long this time and of course um, I still have all my other projects but I've decided that they take a little bit too long to work on so I'm going to be focusing on series like this or um, survival series so that way I can get more content for you guys to be able to see um, again I am not going to stop my larger projects no matter how long they take I, I have fun making them but they take too long and to sign us off alarm system that's all for today folks iron out